So yesterday I got called out to a rescue um, in Western Sydney about a kitten that had been heard on a roof for about a week. Uh, when I got there, there was another gentleman there that had already pulled off most of the tiles in the area that the kitten could be heard. And um, after a little bit of searching, I, I saw her about a metre down into a very, very narrow wall cavity. She couldn't move, we couldn't get anything from underneath her to pull her up. She was just calling out every so often. I could see she was quite compromised because of how squashed her face and head were. Um, she looked dead actually when I was looking down into the wall cavity. It was only the occasional meow that I knew that she was still fighting. Uh, knowing that the only way I could get her out was through the wall, I called on the fire brigade to come out and assist me. As soon as the fireys saw um, how compromised the kitten was and how much she needed our help, they launched straight into action and started taking out a portion of the wall. Luckily the owners of the house were okay as well. We came across the little girl, or we think she's a little girl, um, hanging suspended in, in the wall cavity. Um, the fireys were holding her and then slowly pulling bits of wall out because she was so tightly wedged in there. Uh, and as soon as she was pulled out, her head just fell backwards and we raced straight out to the fire truck and, and put her on oxygen straight away. Uh, as soon as we got back to the RSPCA, um, the vet nurse and I launched straight into action again and started to get her onto some uh, fluids and, um, and also uh, clean up the area around her um, backside, which was full of faeces. Um, as soon as we started clipping that away, we saw that there were maggots um, in and around the area and up, in, up into her um, rectum, which we were very, very concerned about. Um, but luckily that seems to just be superficial, but it's a good indication about how long she's actually been hanging there for. She's very underweight. Um, I didn't think she'd make it through the night. I've thought about her all night. And uh, I've come in this morning and um, she's looking brighter than yesterday. She's still on a drip, but she's taking food off us, which is amazing. Her face is very swollen because I think just the pressure that's been put on her, her ear was lopsided and her jaw was a little bit out of alignment. So we're hoping that won't be a long-term problem and, and it might just be swelling from the situation that she's been in. The next few days are going to be really crucial as to see whether or not she's going to be able to, to survive past this point. We have had this little kitten here with us for about a week and a half. He was brought to us by one of the inspectors. And in that week and a half, he has gone from 515 grams all the way up to 660 grams. So that's an increase of about 150 grams. So that's pretty cool. It shows that he's able to use his jaw, so we're not having that high risk of that disarticulation. And so even with a massive abscess that's there on the side of his jaw, he's still able to eat. And this indicates to us that he is on the road to recovery. He's very playful, loves to eat, as you can see, and he's very friendly. His treatment plan at the moment is to have antibiotics and pain relief and just regular bandage changes and we're hoping that in the future he'll be going up for a foster with one of our inspectors and then soon out to adoptions, isn't that right? Yes. He's come leaps and bounds. He came in as such a small little kitten and he's big and beautiful and, and de-sexed and looking for a home. There was a bit of confusion in the beginning because of the damage done to his bottom area. There was a bit of confusion over whether he was male or female, uh, but he is definitely a male and he looks amazing. The foster carer has done a fantastic job. He's put on heaps of weight, all his medical issues have resolved and he's with his best mate Bert and they're up for adoption now see him from what he was, where he was, how bad he was, how close to death he was and to see him now on the other side of that where you wouldn't know that he's gone through any of that. This bumps. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, this is why we do this job, this is what the RSPCA does. It is why I do this job because there's nothing more satisfying than saving an animal and seeing him move forward like this.